Well, this is going to be fun. I thought it was good to break up reactions because I've done a lot of reactions uh, recently. So we might do a hundred classic metal albums tier list. Randomly, I found this tier list site. So we're going to do this one. I probably it, It's probably going to be a long vid, this one, because I love to talk, but it's a hundred fucking albums, so I need to be pretty quick and not elaborate too much. So, so the first tier is classic, then masterpiece. Amazing, great, good, or nothing special or annoying. So play along at home, write down your ranking in the comments below, and let's start. So, first up is Slayer's Self of Heaven. This is a great album from start to finish, finish featuring amazing songs like Self of Heaven, Behind the Crooked Cross, and Mandatory, and Mandatory Suicide. There are so many good songs on this album. It's a much slower paced album than the ones before, like Show No Mercy. I'm putting this thrash classic in the masterpiece tier. Okay, moving on to the legend himself, Dio's Holy Diver. Released in 1983, this album is just a slab of great heavy metal. It instantly goes into classic category for me. It's featuring amazing songs like Holy Diver, Gypsy, Caught in the Middle, and Rainbow in the Dark. Dun, 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 dun. That melody's amazing. My mouth is salivating right now. I want to listen to it after this. So I'm looking at it and it looks like Scorpions Taken by Force. It's a very good album. Released in 1977, leans more towards the hard rock side than heavy metal, but it was a pretty it was pretty heavy for that time. Songs like uh, Steam Rock Fever is a peculiar song, but quite good, with a great solo in Your Light, and the intense manic screams in He's a Woman, She's a Man. The seven minute closer, Born to Touch Your Feelings, is filled with emotion. If I can remember, the vocalist Klaus Meiner is a great vocalist. So where am I going to put this? Hmm, I think I'll place it in great tier. So next up we got Riot and the album Thunderstill. Now this delivers some great fucking heavy metal and this album is close to perfect for me. I love all the songs and it's a masterpiece. Tony Moore's vocals are excellent on this and the album features amazing tracks like um, uh, Johnny's Back, Fight or Fall, or Thunderstill, the melancholic masterpiece, also Sign of the Crimson Storm, and the closing track, Buried Alive, with amazing guitar work and mouth-watering solos. It's a pretty underrated album that no one ever talks about. No one ever talks about Riot. I'm placing this in the masterpiece tier right next to South of Heaven. Next up is Omen. They are a heavy metal band and they released The Curse. It's a pretty good album. They remind me of Dark Eye Maiden. The vocals are good, the songwriting is excellent, and this album really fucking grows on you through repeated listens. Tracks like Kill On Sight, Eye of the Storm, and SRB are great instrumentals. There are some early growls on this record, even though it was released before death metal was pioneered. It is more influenced by a traditional heavy metal. I love the guitar work on this. I'm putting this next to Scorpions and placing it in the great tier. Actually, if I can, I might boost it up to amazing because this album's really good. Another Omen album, Warning of Danger, offer another brilliant heavy metal experience from this crew. I feel the vocals are a lot better on this album than on The Curse, and the songs are slightly better overall. The album features excellent fucking songwriting and great guitar work. Tracks like Warning of Danger, March On, don't Fear the Night and the instrumental VBP. They seem to put instrumentals on each album and the synth oriented or, oriented haunting premonition and the hard hitting termination are all great songs. I'm considering placing this in the amazing tier just above the curse. We got Overkill and their album Horoscope released in the early 90s. It is good. I have to be honest. I'm not a big fan of Overkill, but this album is killer. With songs like New Machine, The Eerie Bare Bones, Horoscope, and The Sick Groovy Riff and Frankenstein. So yeah, it's a good thrash album, and I'm just going to place this in the good tier. Annihilator's debut album, Alice in Hell, is a solid thrash metal album. I really enjoy most of the songs on here, like Alice in Hell, Wicked Mystic, Word Salad, and Schizos. I find myself enjoying this more than Overkill's Horoscope, so I'm placing Alice in Hell 
in the great tier just above Scorpions. So this is interesting. We got Skyclad and the album The Wayward Sons of Mother Earth. It's a terrific thrash metal album. History says that this is one of the first albums to incorporate folk music, but I seem to disagree. Nevertheless, it's like if Creator went folky. This is a really good album. I love, I love songs like Sky Beneath My Feet, The Folky, The Widder Jin's Jig, and Our Dying Island, which sounds a lot like what Megadeth would do. The Credible Fall is a heart-hitting song. The album is very good, so I'm going to place it in the great tier. Speaking of Skyclads again, sophomore album, A Burnt Offering for the Bone Idol is another fantastic album. They incorporate more cool folk elements and lovely violin sections. I feel the debut is a bit better as it's a lot heavier. A Broken Promised Land is a great song as well, Alone in Death's Shadow, so I'm putting this in the good tier just above Overkill. So I think this is Refuge Denied by Sanctuary. This was a terrific album. This was their debut album, I think. It's like if Judas Priest and Merciful Fate had a baby, you would get Sanctuary. His falsetto is incredible. He can hit those high notes. The music sounds very dark and haunting. Soldiers of, Soldiers of Steel is a good one, as well as Die For My Sins and that groovy riff in fucking Ascension to Destiny. Yeah, I'm thinking of putting this in Amazing Tear. Just right in the middle. So next up is Sin After Sin by Judas Priest. This album instantly goes into the classic category. It was incredible for its time. Put in classic there. Rob Halford's vocals are exceptional. The guitar work on this album is amazing. Songs like Sinner, Last Rose of Summer, Raw Deal, Here Comes the Tears, and Dissident Aggressor stand out. Actually, I might drop it down to Masterpiece. Don't hate. <laughs> I get a bit carried away. There might be other albums from Judas Priest on this list, and I do see a few down there. So Halloween, The Time of Oath is a good album with fantastic musicianship. While I prefer other albums to this one, it features lots of heavy and power metal elements. The vocals are brilliant, and there are really fucking good songs like um, Before the War, Still Tormentor, and oh, Forever and One, which is one of their best ballads ever. I'm putting this in the good tier, just right up to the good tier, onto great. So now we got Metallica's Injustice for All. It's a pretty good fucking album, but I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece, classic, or even amazing. I'll just place it in the good character uh, category, just last in my opinion. It's definitely downgrade from the previous albums. Tracks like Blackened and Justice for All, The Killer Song 1 and Dyer's Eve stand out. Actually, might bump it a little bit higher, just above Sky Sclad. At the moment, I'm just placing the good tier, but I might move it up in the ranking later on. Um, so now we got Megadeth's Rust in Peace. Well, fuck me. This instantly goes into Classic, along with Dio. Um, it's the tip top of the tiers. It's an amazing album from start to fucking finish, and every song is warranted on this album. It is a classic thrash metal album to me, the holy grail of thrash metal. Amazing songs like Holy Wars, The Punishment is Due, Hangar 18 with that oh, amazing instrumental, <laughs> and Take No Prisoners. An incredible solo in Tornado of Souls makes it a masterpiece. It's going in classic tier. So now we got Rainbow and the album Rising featuring Dio on, on vocals. It's a fucking classic. Once again, in the highest tier, um, right next to Megadeth, are songs like Stargazer with that captivating melody, Starstruck and A Light in the Black showcase the excellence of this album. Um, Richie Blackmore truly shines as a wizard on guitar. So next up we got, um, I think it's Savage, Sabotage Edge of Thorns. It's a really good album, but not as great as the other, so some of their other albums. Well, Hall of the Mountain King is considered a masterpiece. This album falls short in comparison. There are some great songs on this album, such as He Carves His Stone, Follow Me, and Miles Away. Overall, I would categorize this album as being in the good tier. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, there we are. 
So now we got Dio's Lock Up The Wolves is an album that grows on you, grows on you with every listen. Dio's vocals are absolutely fucking incredible with so much emotion, especially evident in emotionally emotionally filled ballads ballads like Between Two Hearts. Between Two Hearts, the riftastic Lock Up The Wolves and the slow crescendo in my eyes also stands out. For me, this album is a masterpiece and one of my favorite Dio albums. Therefore, I would place it into the masterpiece territory r- j- above South of Heaven. Fucking great album. So and now we got Judas Priest screaming for vengeance. Instantly earns a spot in the classic tier. This album is amazing from start to finish with classic songs such as the fast paced electric eye. You've got another thing coming to, to, to chains and pain and pleasure. There are just so many good songs on this. Such a feel good classic heavy album and um i'm gonna put this in classic i am i'm really gonna put this in classic just below megadeth so now we got saxon's power and glory i think i might place this in the good tier why i don't believe it's their best work um yeah just here well, I don't believe this is their best work. There are some terrific songs on this album, like Red Line, Warrior, and Watching the Sky. The great solos and vocals by Biff Byford are always impressive. Saxon is one of the most consistent bands in heavy metal, still producing great albums. Therefore, Power and the Glory will sit in the good tier at the moment. So next we got Accept and the album Metal Heart. Some more like glam metal, almost like the ACDC, ACDC version of heavy metal with those vocals. The musicianship is pretty tight and it's a very fun record with a Beethoven inspired guitar solo on Metal Hard, on Metal Heart, the hard hitting riffing on Midnight Mover and the anthemic closer Bound of Four. It's a pretty good record, but Accept's early works were better. Therefore, I'm placing this in the good tier, maybe just above Saxon. Halloween and the album Wars of Jericho is a prime example of early power metal. It's hard hitting and fast paced with great songwriting. Released in the 80s, it marked a new era, era for power metal. While I personally believe the later albums were superior to this one, I still hold this album in high regard for its amazing songs like Judas, Ride the Sky, Reptile, Gorga, and Metal Invaders. Overall, I would place this album in the good tier for now, as I don't think it quite reaches the level of amazing. That right up the tippy top. So now we've got Nightfall in Middle Earth by Blind Guardian. It will be placed in the amazing tier, I think. Uh, maybe just next to Omen right there. So it's an awesome record with strong co- concepts surrounding the law of Lord of the Rings. There are so many great songs such as Nightfall, Noldor, Thorn, and the Curse of Fenor. I don't think it's a masterpiece, but it's close to being up there. There is some great power metal on this epic album, may I add. Oh, hello. I made in Seven Son of the Seven Son instantly earns classic right up next to Dio. Um, it's an amazing album from start to finish with great production, hiding songs, tracks like Can I Play With Badness, Moon Child, Infinite Dreams, and Only the Good Die Young are all fantastic. Bruce Dickinson vocals are incredible on this album, solidifying its place in the classic tier. So now we got Rhapsody and the album Symphony of Enchanted Lands. Definitely belong in the amazing tier, I think. So we'll just put it here. Oh, mate. I think, you know what? I prefer it than uh, South of Heaven, actually. Uh, Yeah, so I love the epic and symphonic nature of this album. It's a great blend of progressive power metal and a unique flavor. The concept of the album is truly, it truly sounds cinematic. The guitar solo is outstanding and tracks like Emerald Sword, Eternal Glory, and the masterpiece Symphony of Enchanted Lands really stands out. This is a great album that I'm considering placing in the amazing tier. Actually, come to think of it, I might drop it down to amazing right next to Blind Guardian. King Diamond's Dem is a fantastic concept album that I'm immediately placing in the amazing tier right up the top for me. The songwriting on this album is excellent, delving into intriguing themes involving grandmother and a teapot. 
King Diamond's creative mind has produced a hard-hitting, brutal, lyrical masterpiece. The guitar solo is impressive, and King Diamond's vocals, include he, including his falsetto and growls, are mind-blowing. Tracks like Mouth is Getting Weaker, Bye Bye Missy, with the dark narrative of his sister's demise, and Twilight Symphony showcase the album's brilliant. With so many great songs, Dam definitely earns a place in e in the amazing tier, right there. So Deep Purple's Burn, need I say more, it belongs in the classic tier. This amazing hard rock album speaks for itself, delivering solid experience from start to finish. Therefore, it rightly earns its spot in the classic tier for me. There's no need to elaborate further, to be honest. Let's keep it concise. I have food cooking and ranking 100 albums is quite the fucking task. Next up is Stradivarius and that album episode. It, it's a terrific power metal record with progressive flavors. The guitar work and vocals are great with neat classical elements and the album features killer songs like Nighttime Eclipse, the awesome instrumental Stratosphere and the emotional Will the Sunrise. Overall, it's an awesome album that deserves a spot in the amazing tier. Uh, so we'll just put it around here. So next up is Saxon. Saxon's Denim and Leather belongs to the classic tier in my opinion. I adore this album from start to finish. The guitar work is fantastic and the vocals are brilliant. Tracks like Rough and Ready, Midnight Rider, Princess of the Night, Princess of the Night and Never Surrender are all amazing songs. So that goes to classic. Maybe next to, you know what? The lower classic tier. Now Judas Priest's Painkiller is a modern day classic in my opinion, featuring amazing tracks like Painkiller, All Guns Blazing, Metal, Meltdown, Between Hammer and the Anvil, and One Shot of Glory. It's a powerhouse of an album. Halford's vocals are incredible, solidifying this place in the classics. It's truly one of the modern classics in metal. So, right up here. So Wolf and Their Soul album, Edge of the World, released in 1984, is a melodic and catchy heavy metal album featuring great guitar solos and impressive vocals. It's unfortunate that this, that this band only released one album because you get to enjoy some catchy tracks like Highway Rider, Heaven with Rock and Roll, A Soul for the Devil, and Rest in Peace. This album is tight, short, and cohesive, making a strong contender for an amazing tier. Yet, I'll place this in the amazing tier right down the bottom so next up we got Stratus, Stradivarius Visions it's a terrific album from start to finish I believe it's their best work blending melodic power metal heavy metal and progressive metal seamlessly the vocals are excellent and the guitar work is fucking amazing with solos that will cut through you like a tsunami standard tracks like The Kiss of Judas Forever Free, the heartfelt and emotional Before the Winter, the heart-hitting paradise with its heavy metal flavors, and the great progressive metal closer Vision Southern Cross make this album a standout. I'm considering placing it in the masterpiece tier right next to Dio there. Iron Maiden's Power Slaves comes next. This belongs in the classic tier, in my opinion, just right next to Iron Maiden, right there. Yes, yes, just right there, right next to uh, Seven Son of the Seven Sung. It's easily one of Iron Maiden's above masterpiece albums. The melodies on this record are fucking infectious. The solos are incredible, featuring amazing tracks like Power Slave, Rhyme of the Ancient Maria, Mariner, the Jewelist, The High Energy, Aces High, and Two Minutes to Midnight. This album is packed with fantastic songs. It's one of my all-time favorites. Merciful Fades, Don't Break the Oath is an album that took a while to grow on me. I'm gonna categorize it as amazing because it truly is an outstanding record. The riffs, riffs on this album are insane, and the solos are exceptional. Desecration of Souls is a standout track for me, along with The Oath. Come to the Sabbath is also a fantastic song. Therefore, I'm placing this album in amazing tier right above Omens. So now we got Halstar and their album Nosferatu. This is hauntingly a peculiar album, but it's pretty amazing. The album is very progressive, featuring some great songs and ripping guitar solos. Jamie Rivera on vocals does a great job, and the dark sound of the album reminds me a lot of Merciful Fate style. Tracks like Baptize in Blood, with its spiraling melodies, harsh reality, swirling madness, and the curse has passed away, stand out for me. Therefore, I'm placing this heavy metal fury in amazing tier. Maybe just about there. 
So we now we got Merciful Fate and a debut album, Melissa. I absolutely love this album, so I'm placing it in the classics tier. The guitar riffs, melodies, and fucking solos, and King Diamond's vocals are exceptional on this album. It's dark and haunting, featuring standout tracks like Curse of the Pharaohs, Into the Coven, and the heart hitting epic Satan's Fall. This album is truly great and deserves its spot in the, the classics. Deep Purple Machine Head is another album that deserves a spot in the classics tier. Uh, this album is exceptional, fucking blending hard rock and heavy metal elements with iconic songs like Highway Star, Smoke on the Water, with that unfed unforgettable riff, space tracking and pictures of home. Ian Gillen's vocals are simply incredible on this record, absolutely love it and believe it belongs in the classic tier. Next up is Scorpions and the album Blackout. It's quite a heavy album, especially for the early 80s with Klaus Minor delivering some crazy vocal work at times. The album features great songwriting and fantastic solos. Might categorize this as amazing tier. Considering tracks like Blackout, No One Like You Are Now, and Dynamite, they could stand alone in the amazing tier. So maybe right, oh, actually, maybe last. <laughs> But still, it's amazing. So King Diamond's The Eye is a remarkable album. I love the concept behind it, and his vocals are great. His falsetto is incredible. The album features great riffs, strong song ring, and an interesting concept. Therefore, I'm placing this in the high, amazing tier. So Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz is another classic album, but I wouldn't categorize it in the classic tier. I might place it in the good tier, probably. Uh, Maybe there, yeah. So, uh, the good tier, yeah. It's a solid album, but not exceptional. Well, features killer songs like Crazy Train, Mr. Crowley, and Revelation. The rest of the album may feel like filler, therefore it's going in the good tier. So now we got Judas Priest, Sad Wings of Destiny. It's a fucking fantastic album, and I believe it's even better than Sin After Sin, so it deserves a higher ranking. We stand out tracks like Victim of Changes, The Ripper, and Dream of Deceiver. There were some truly great songs on here. I'm going to categorize this as a masterpiece, just maybe next to Dio. So another album that's going into the masterpiece category is Ice Earth's Burnt Off, Burnt Offerings. Dante's Inferno is truly one of the greatest songs of all time with its captivating story progression and amazing vocals throughout the album. I appreciate how heavy this album can get for a power metal band, even though it doesn't strictly fit into the power metal genre. Therefore, firmly place Burnt Offerings in the masterpiece tier right next to Slayer. So now we got Seraph Ongo and the album King of the Dead. I have a love-hate relationship with this album. The love stems from the atmosphere and musicianship. While that hate arises from Tim Baker's vocals on this, this album does grow on you with repeated listens, but honestly, I don't see it as a classic. It's just a good album. Tracks like Finger of Scorn, The Hard Hitting Black Machine, and Ride the Black Machine and King of the Dead bring a doomy feel. The great solos and guitar work reminiscent of 70s hard rock are notable, but the vocals can be irritating at times. I'm placing this in the good tier, in tier teetering on the borderline of nothing special. I'll just put it there. Artillery and their album by Inheritance. It's a hard hitting fucking thrash metal album with some incredible songs. I admire the songwriting, the fantastic solos, and the groovy riffs it offers. The first half of the album leads towards thrash metal before incorporating more traditional heavy metal elements. Memorable tracks like Cohomaniac, Beneath the Clay, R.I.P. Don't Believe and Back in the Trash stand out. I'm categorizing this as a masterpiece. It's brilliant 90s album. Fans of thrash metal should definitely check this out as it's incredibly melodic and catchy. So masterpiece, about there. Manila, 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 Manila Road and the album Open the Gates are an easy classic for me. It's simply an amazing album from start to finish with insane guitar work throughout. The solos and vocals shine brilliantly, especially in songs like The Nine Fucking Wave where you hear proto-death growls. In my opinion, this is one of the heaviest 80s heavy metal albums, blending elements of doom metal and heavy metal seamlessly. It's a masterpiece of an album that I truly love. I'm placing this in a classic tier without a doubt. Mark Sheldon's vocals are exceptional on this record. So yeah, it's really right next to Maiden there.
Halloween Keep of the Seven Keys Part 2 is an amazing record. It might even categorize this as a masterpiece due to the brilliant power metal, great guitar solos and vocals featured on this. The songwriting is exceptional and the 13 minute epic self-titled track is standout. Therefore, I'm confidently placing this in the masterpiece tier. Right there. So we finally arrive at post 2000s record Skullview and the album Consequences of Failure. It's a very good album with incredible vocals. His falsetto is particularly impressive. The musicianship, the musicianship is top notch and the album carries a heavy tone throughout. Dark and ominous heavy metal vibes are present. The, we stand on tracks like Time for Violence, Palace of the Boundless Cold, and Seek the Old Man for Knowledge, featuring those intense vocal deliveries. I'm placing this in the good tier. While it can be overwhelming with all the crazy falsettos, it still stands as a solid record. So now we got Pagan Altar and the album The Time Lord. It's a good album, and that's about it. This album has a very stoner feel with elements of stoner doom and crushing guitar work. It sounds quite similar to what Black Sabbath sounded like in the 70s, even a vocal style. While it's a good album, I wouldn't label it as amazing or a masterpiece. So it's comfortably sitting in the uh, good tier right there. Iron Maiden's Number the Beast instantly ascends to the classic tier. Instantly, right next to Power Slave. So um, this was the first album to feature Bruce Dickinson on vocals with amazing songs like The Prisoner, Hello Be Thy Name, and 22 Occasion Avenue. This album speaks for itself. It's a classic album, and if anyone thinks it deserves a lower tier, well, they must have rocks in their fucking heads. Except in the album Objection Overruled is up next. Except is, always, Except is always fun to listen to with great songwriting and enjoyable sing alongable tracks like Bulletproof, Slays to Metal, and Objection Overruled, the beautiful ballad Am Amamos La Vida with that epic solo. I will place this in the good tier as there are many albums on this list. Maybe in the middle, right there. So this person must love Accept. We're pretty sure this is one of their first albums, Restless and Wild. This is a very good record. I'll place this in the great tier. There's some fantastic early heavy metal on this album. Great solos and hard hitting songs. Tracks like Fast as a Shark, the amazing solo in Shake Your Heads. Uh, Demon's Night and the, press and the impressive closer, Princess of the Dawn, solidifying its position in the great tier, maybe, yeah, next to Scorpion. So King Diamond and his album Fatal Portrait is pretty good album, and it's a debut album after he left Merciful Fate. I appreciate the guitar work on this one, and he utilizes a significant amount of falsetto vocals, which is quite impressive. I'm considering placing this in the good tier, high up in the good tier. The wrist and solos on this one are solid, Therefore, it falls into good tier. His other albums like Them, Abigail, and even Conspiracy are a lot better. Now we go to Danzig. When it comes to Danzig, I really don't like him. I'm not a fan of his music, but I think he's a cool person. I attempted to listen to this album, but I couldn't. I kept turning it off. I don't believe I'll ever enjoy his music. Therefore, I'm placing this album in nothing special. Fuck off. Get in the bin. Now we got Man of War's debut album, Battle Hymns has a very masculine sound. All jokes aside, this album is brilliant from start to finish. The title track, Battle Hymns, stands out as a masterpiece on its own. I'm inclined to classify this as amazing, as I recognize that this album paved the way for many bands. Tracks like Deftone, Shellshock, Manowar, and Dark Avenger are simply amazing songs featuring great solos and incredible vocal work by Eric Adams. So I think I might put this in the amazing tier, maybe just in the middle right there. Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath go straight into that classic tier for me, right here. Yeah, that'll do. With Ronnie James Dio on vocals, this album showcases the like, fucking best riffs from Tony Iommi. It features amazing classic songs like Neon Nights, Children of the Sea, Heaven and Hell with infectious guitar riff and the chorus, Die Young and Lonely is the Word. The album combines heavy metal greatness with elements of doom while still retaining that signature Black Sabbath sound. Dio, Dio does an incredible job on vocals. So next up is Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. Need I say more? This definitely goes into the classic tier. If you don't place this in the highest tier, you must have rocks in your head. <laughs> the Doomy, uh, right up the top, man. Yeah, or... Oh maybe just in the middle right there. But you had the Doomy Fuzzy riffs alone weren't the highest tier, not to mention Ozzy's iconic vocals released in 1971. 
it still hits hard in 2024. The album features amazing stoner songs like Sweet Leaf with that iconic riff along with tracks like After Forever, Children of the Grave, with its eerie whispers, Lords, Lord of This World and Into the Void. Do I need to continue? It's an incredible classic album that I would give 100% to this day. It remains my favorite Black Sabbath album. We have stumbled upon an album I've never heard of. Well, this is embarrassing. Moving on. An album that I believe is a masterpiece, so we'll just put this in nothing special, I guess. An album that I believe is a masterpiece and deserves to be in that tier is none other than Rhapsody's debut album, Legendary Tales. This symphonic metal album is simply brilliant. I adore it from start to finish. The orchestral elements, amazing guitar work, and seamless transitions from heavy and somber to orchestral are all standout features. It might just be my favorite Rhapsody album. Tracks like Warrior of Ice, Rage of the Winter, Lord of Thunder, and the epic legendary fucking tales. Or contribute to its greatness. Yes, this album is definitely going in the masterpiece tier. Yeah, might move it right up to here. Mm -hmm. So now we got Black Sabbath and the album tier. An awesome album from start to finish with Tony Martin on vocals. I wish I could find this on CD, so I haven't really spent much time with it. I typically listen to it on YouTube where they have a version available. Anno Mundi is a great song along with the Sabbath Stones, Valhalla and Heaven in Black. It's a different sounding Black Sabbath album, but it's brilliant for what it is. A pretty catchy album all about Norse mythology. I'm putting this in the amazing tier right here. Need I say more? Slayer's Rain and Blood goes into the classic tier <laughs> easily. Uh, just There's just so many freaking classics now. Um, I think I might put it just... Megadeth, yeah. That'll do. It's a thrash metal masterpiece with great guitar work, heavy sound, and Tom's vocals are absolutely incredible. Undoubtedly one of the best extreme metal albums out there featuring songs like Angel of Death, Necrophobic, Postmortem, and Raining Blood with that iconic riff. Yes, classic tier. Moving on. So now we got Manila Road and the album Crystal Logic are honestly ahead of its time. This is an incredible album from start to finish, but I do prefer Open the Gates a little bit more. The vocal work by Mark Sheldon is masterful, accompanied by great guitar solos, haunting atmosphere, and fantastic fucking drumming. Dreams of Eschaton is a classic metal song. The Ram is incredible. Crystal logic! And that infectious chorus. Then the Veils of Negative Existence stands out. Sheldon's vocal range spans from extremely aggressive to great falsettos, at times sounding similar to Bruce Dickinson. I'm placing this in the masterpiece tier. You can't go wrong with Manila Road. And it's, you know, it's going to be right up, right up the top here. YNT in the album Rock We Trust is next. This is a very fun album that sounds quite similar to Scorpions. I've only heard it a few time, times. It features great guitar work and really good vocals along with some heartfelt songs. I classify this as a glam metal album due to the fancy riffing presented. It straddles the borderline between glam metal and hard rock. I'll put this in the good tier because there are a lot of better albums than Rock We Trust. But um, maybe, maybe down a bottom here. So now we got Seraph Angle in the album Paradise Lost. Well, what can I say? The vocals are so much better on this. I love the vocals and the songs are so good, such as Chaos Rising, The Troll, Before the Lash, and The Paradise Lost. It's a fantastic album from start to finish with great guitar work, doom metal, and really good production. I'm putting this in the masterpiece tier. It's pretty good. Around there. So Satan and their debut album called Niac. They also released a new album this week. Beastly riffs abound on this record along with amazing guitar solos and was released in 1983. Every song in this album is warranted and the vocals are on point. Tracks like Trial by Fire, Blades of Steel and Killer Solos with Killer Solos and Break Free with that frantic scream at the end stand out. And that instrumental The Ritual where they just shred is amazing. It's going into low masterpiece tier here. Symphony X and their album Twilight in Olympus is a great progressive power metal album while it features strong neoclassical classical elements. I feel that the other albums are a lot better. I don't think this is a masterpiece. I consider it just a good album. Though The Looking Glass is a great 13 minute song with incredible solos and transitions and Church of the Machine is also great. As for The Relic, yeah, I'm still putting it in um, good tier. Maybe there. Iron Maiden and their self-titled album um, Iron Maiden, released in 1980, 
it's a different sound that captures like their original more punky vibe with Paul Diano and vocals. It remains a very good album featuring standout tracks like Prowler, Remember Tomorrow, Phantom of the Opera, Charlotte the Harlot and Iron Maiden. Despite the evolution of the sound, I will continue to play this in a master t- masterpiece tier because Iron Maiden consistently delivers incredible fucking albums. It's still an amazing record right here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Metallica and the album Ride the Lightning. Need I say more? It is easily earns its place in the classic tier. This album is my favorite Metallica album by far, embodying the essence of thrash and heavy metal. With amazing solos and songs like Fight with Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Creeping Death, and the Mouth Watering Instrumental, The Call of Cthulhu, which stands as Metallica's best instrumental to date. I'm placing this in the classic tier. This is prime example, so we'll just uh right there rainbow and that album long live rock and roll are on the chopping block it's a good album but doesn't quite reach it's the brilliance of rising this album has a very fun sound with ronnie james dio selling on vocals songs like la connection long live rock and roll the eerie keyboard synth in gates of babylon is amazing and rainbow eyes are all fantastic but just placing this in the Great tier, right up the top for me. So we've got Heavy Load and the album Stronger Than Evil. It's another early 80s album. This one is terrific, featuring great riffs and vocals. It has a very dark sound, but I love the songwriting on this record with great songs like Saturday Night and Roll of the North, along with some progressive flavors and excellent production. I'm putting this in great tier right there candle mass and the album nightfall once again this is going into the classic tier they bring in epic doom metal introducing infectious fucking riffs so we'll just put it right here um incredible atmosphere i would easily give this album a hundred percent rating it's a classic and a masterpiece a masterpiece with songs like the wild the souls at the galleys and and you are bewitch it's a masterpiece that belongs in the classic tier stradivarius and the album dream space is terrific album is a terrific album there's so much emotion songs like tear of ice and a beautiful elegance of power metal showcased on this record makes it one of the best power metal albums of all times in my opinion the hard-hitting fourth row like with that infectious riff, We Are The Future, Wings Of Tomorrow, and Dream Space with that incredible scream at the end all contribute to making this an amazing power metal album. I'm putting this in Masterpiece tier, right? Yeah, right around there. So Death Angel and the debut Thrasher, the Ultra Violence, what an incredible album this is. Once again, this album was ahead of its time. The guitar riffs and vocals are very heavy for an album released in the 80s. It has a proto black metal feel with screams and shrieks, a brilliant album from start to finish, pushing the boundaries of extreme metal with great songs like Evil Priest and its meaty fucking riffs, the cool instrumental that's over 10 minutes, Final Death, Voracious Souls, and many more amazing tracks. I'm putting this in the masterpiece tier, but don't get me wrong, it's still a classic fucking album. Right next to Artillery there. So now we got now we got Diamond Head uh, and the album Lightning to the Nations. For me, this goes straight into classic tier. Uh, this is it right up, like really right up the top here. This is so good. So um, <laughs> this is an incredibly underrated band. Um, this is an incredible album from start to finish, featuring amazing guitar work and vocals. The songwriting is top notch with classic tracks like. Lightning to the Nation, The Prince, Suck in Love, The Cool Riff with Ominous Melodies in Am I Evil and Helpless. There are just so many classic songs on this record, making it one of the best metal albums of the 80s. I would easily score this 100%. It's a perfect heavy metal debut album. Some more manly metal for you, Man of War and the album Kings of Metal. This is a great heavy metal album with classic songs, with classic songs like Kings of Metal, which is a banger, Heart of Steel, with that beautiful piano intro, and Amazing Ballad and Pleasure Slave. There are just incredible songs and the production is brilliant. I love the vocals on this album. So I'm putting it in a uh, great tier. Right up the top there. I'm putting Amphrax's Fistful of Metal in the good tier. So right down the bottom there. Um, the albums don't really grab me. There's some good thrash metal on this record with songs like Death Rider, Panic, Soldiers of Metal, and Howling Furies, but it's just a good album. Not fucking great. We are back to Howlstar and the album Burning Star. 
They are an underrated band, yet they managed to create another great album. The vocals are crazy on this with high falsetto and crushing riffs. I actually really enjoy this album with songs like Burning Star, Witch's Eye, Towards the Unknown and Shadows of Iger. There are so many great songs on this record with amazing solos and proggy elements. I'm putting this in great tier. Maybe right in the middle there. Heathen and their album Victims of Deception is a really hard hitting thrash jam with great guitar work and some phenomenal solos. Features head banging riffs and long progressive songs. It's a fun listen, the vocals are good. Songs like, um, fuck, what's the songs? Hypnotize, Heathen songs and the killer riff, Opiate of the Masses, and Mercy is No Virtue stand out. Come to think of it, I believe this is a fantastic thrash metal record with nice acoustic guitars throughout some songs and great build up songs. I'm putting this in the uh, great tier for me. Right here. Man in the middle. Um, we got Heaven's Gate and the album Living in Hysteria. This is another fun album with great guitar work. I love the production on this and it has an epic feel. The songwriting is great, bling. Elements are heavy metal and glam metal. Can't Stop Rocking is an absolute banger along with Living in Hysteria. The shredding and Fred, the shredding in Fredless, and the Never Ending Fire. I might put this in the amazing tier. It's a fantastic album, such a fun and feel good album. Maybe just there, and we're gonna move Omen around there. So we're starting to uh, starting to take shape here. King Diamond, the Malevolent possession story of Abigail. This, al this album is amazing. It's in the classic tier. The riffs and story on this album are incredible and King Diamond's vocals are terrific. With his fucking high falsettos, this goes straight into classic tier for me. Right up the round. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Oh wait, that's Rainbow? Uh, where's King Diamond? Um, yeah, the it's right up here actually. I'm gonna move Rainbow just here. Master Black Sabbath. Pretty happy with that actually. So this album is amazing. We're talking about King Diamond again. Um, I got carried away here. <laughs> the riffs and story in this album are incredible. King Diamond's vocals are terrific with his high falsetto and low registers. Amazing songs like Abigail, A Mansion in Darkness, The Possession and Black Horseman. Every song is just killer on this record. The solos are fucking mouth-watering. It's a classic tier for me. It's a must-listen. So now we got Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind, go straight into the classic tier for me, if I can get it. Right next to, you know, right next to Number of the Beast here. Um, you know, <laughs> it features the Trooper, Where Eagles Dare, Flight of Icarus, and To Tame a Land for me. It's easily a classic heavy metal album I love. I need a little sippy, actually. Oh, we all comment below if you're still watching. <laughs> so next up, we got Judas Priest, Defenders of Faith. It's my favorite Judas Priest album, so it's going in to classic tier if I can try and find it. I think it might be right, right there, to be honest. Um... Rob Halford's vocals are just incredible on this with amazing songs like Free Will Burning, Rock Hard, Ride Free, Night Comes Down, an incredible song, and The Sentinel. This album is a masterpiece, so it's going into the classic tier, the highest fucking tier. King Diamond and that album, Conspiracy, is another haunting great album. I love the guitar work and King Diamond's vocals, which can be demonic at times. Standout tracks like At The Graves, A Slow and Plodding Sleepless Night, A Visit From The Dead, and The Hard Hitting Cremation make this a fantastic album. I'm placing this in the great tier, just next to Man of War here. So now we got another Diamond Head album, Borrowed Time. This is a sophomore album. This is going in the amazing, amazing tier. Still a fantastic album, but they re-recorded two songs from their debut album. So there are in four new songs on this album. Great songwriting and fantastic songs, amazing vocals, and just some fantastic heavy metal. Songs like In the Heat of the Night, Borrowed Time, Call Me, which is an awesome chorus, and Don't You Ever Leave Me. I put this in the masterpiece tier, but it sits in amazing because they re-recorded Lightning, uh, to the Nations and Am I Evil, which still sounds amazing with the better production, but it's going in amazing tier Right here. So now we got Megadeth and the album Peace Sells, but who's buying? It's another incredible album from this band It features amazing guitar work and riffs with fucking fantastic songs. I'm putting this in Masterpiece tier 
right next to artillery there um well i feel that some albums are slightly better than this one we great songs like peace sales good morning black friday and wake up dead it definitely deserves its place in the masterpiece tier so now we got metallica's master of puppets it goes in the masterpiece tier it may not be good as ride the lightning um but it still is a masterpiece in my eyes about there headfield's vocal work is amazing and the guitar work features ripping solos battery is one of the best openers on any metal album the thing that should not be with that do me fucking riff, master of puppets, Leaper, Messiah, and the instrumental Orion all contribute to making this such a great album. The Godfather of Black, the Godfather of Black Metal, I mean the Godfather of Metal was back with the last in line by Dio. Honestly can't put this anywhere other than the classic fucking tier. It's his sophomore album. So we'll just put him up to classic here. And we're just going to maybe just yeah right there i i think i'm happy with that it's his sophomore album and it's another classic album from this amazing man the band is so tight on this with amazing solos and melodic songs like the last in line i speed at night with that speedy solo one night in the city um mystery with one of the best choruses i've heard and egypt the song there are so many good songs on this album it's going classic tier so now we got Voivod and the album Nothing Face is actually a pretty good album. I was surprised to like this because I'm not a big fan of Voivod, especially their last few releases. This is some great prog thrash metal. I love the guitar work and the vocals are actually good. The Unknown Knows, Nothing Face and X-Ray Mirrors are standout tracks. It's a pretty good album. I might put this in Amazing Tier, right down maybe, yeah, here. Rainbow and their debut album uh, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow is a fantastic album with Dio on vocals and amazing guitar work. This album is one of the origins of heavy metal glory. It still maintains the bluesy vibes in tracks like Snake Charmer, Snake Charmer, the beautiful and emotional Catch the Rainbow, the subtle and passionate The Temple of the King, and the catchy Man of the Silver Mountain. It's a brilliant album from start to finish. I'm placing this in the classic tier, no buts. But it, but it's amazing for 1975, and it's still amazing in 2024. Gonna put this up in classic tier. Not as good as Dio, I don't think. Ooh, where am I gonna put it? Maybe down. Yeah, round about there. Yang V. Manstein's album Trilogy is a wonderful piece of heavy metal and power metal released in the mid 80s. The album features beautiful guitar work by Manstein with strong influences, with strong influences neoclassical as well as fantastic vocals by Mark Bowles. Bowles' vocals enhance the overall experience in my opinion, complementing Manstein's incredible guitar skills. Standout tracks on the album include You Don't Remember, I'll Never Forget, Liar, Queen of Love, The Acoustic Gem Crying, and The Shredding Solo in Fire, and the trilogy and tr trilogy suite to close off the album trilogy trilogy is truly a masterpiece and a must listen for any heavy metal fan out there it is a hidden hidden gym that deserves to be discovered so i'll put this in masterpiece here about here Praying Madness and the debut album Time Tells No Lies have sparked debates among fans about whether the band falls in the heavy metal hard rock category. Personally, I lean towards heavy metal territory. The album, while softer than many other releases from the 80s, features some standout tracks such as All Day and All Night, with its killer, with its killer fucking solo, Cheated, Lovers to the Grave, and The Amazing Floating with Suicide. Surprisingly, even Metal Archives does not have Praying Mantis listed, which is shocking considering the heavy metal sound to this album. The band truly deserves more recognition for their talent. I would place Time Tells No Lies in great tier of albums. So we're just putting great tier. My phone is calling. Maybe in the middle right here. Now we got Overkill in the album Years of Decay, released in the late 80s. It's a very good fresh record, although I'm not particularly into the vocals. However, I do enjoy the song Elimination with its great song in the middle. The album features a mix of aggression tracks like I Hate and slow haunting songs with doomy riffs such as the 10 minute epic playing with Spider Skull Crush. Overall, we'd place this album in the great tier, not higher nor lower. It's a fantastic listen from start to finish. So I'll put um, that in the amazing tier here oh, i'll just bump into amazing tier 
No, I'll just drop it down to great. Okay. Ken Zinner and the album Timescape. Timescape is a good album, though not great, just good. The album features elements of power metal, progressive metal, and heavy metal with great jam sessions throughout. The incredible solo work, impressive drumming, and exceptional guitar work stand out on the record. The vocals are also very good with standout tracks like, um, fuck, I can't remember the songs, Future Signs, Images of the Past, Walking in the Rain with its crazy solo, and Land of Shadows. I would categorize this album in a good tier, as I don't believe there, are, as I believe there are better albums above it. So this goes a good tier, probably. Actually, I prefer that over that. Now we got Halloween Keeper of the Seven Keys. This is a great power metal album. I do love the guitar prowess on this, and just the vocal delivery as well is absolutely fucking fantastic. The Keeper of the Seven Keys goes. I'm gonna put it in amazing tier, actually, around here. You can tell I'm starting to rush here because I've been recording over an hour. So next up is Tad Moreau's and the album Leaving the Past Behind. It's a very good album. The album features amazing guitar solos, orchestral moments, and hard hitting riffs. Standout tracks include Voices Are Calling, a fantastic song, Internal Lies with heavy crushing riffs, and Love Songs and love songs like Reach for the Sky and The Way of History. The vocals are fantastic, incorporating progressive elements mixed with epic doom moments. Overall, the album belongs in fucking great tier. Around here, I think. And now we got Symphony X and the album Odyssey. It's a fucking masterpiece. And it goes in the masterpiece tier. Maybe right up the tippy top up. Mm, uh, yeah, right there. Um, I love the guitar work and the solos on this album. You have the Odyssey, which is 24 minutes long. And before that, you have amazing songs like Kings of Terror and Accolade 2 and Awakenings. I love the orchestral elements and keyboards on this. It's such a great album. <coughs> we got a few albums left. Megadeth's Countdown to Extinction. Countdown to Extinction is my favorite Megadeth album. It's going into a classic tier. If I can try and move it up here. You know what? I think it, yeah, it goes right next to Megadeth, I reckon. I, I just really enjoy it. It's such an amazing album from start to finish and really highlights the talent on Megadeth. Symphony of Destruction, that chorus is amazing. Sweating Bullet and the song Countdown to Extinction are all classic songs. So now we got Saxon and the album Crusader. It's a great heavy metal album. A lot of the vocals on this album have no hesitation in placing it in the masterpiece tier. It's one of my favorite Saxon albums. Standout tracks include The Hard Hitting Crusader, Sailing to America, Just Let Me Rock, and, and Do It All For You. The, Br <laughs> the Brilliant Soul is an amazing vocals make the, uh, this album top tier blend of hard rock and heavy metal. So I'll put Saxon in the masterpiece tier. Maybe just right there, that'll, that'll do. Well, this was a huge surprise. Crimson Glory and the album Transcendence easily lands in the masterpiece tier for me. The vocals on this album are reminiscent of a mix between Rob Halford and King Diamond. The vocalist can reach incredibly high ranges and delivers an incredible performance. Additionally, this progressive metal record showcases amazing musicianship. Every song on the album is exceptional with vocalist Midnight shining brightly. He unfortunately died about 10 years ago. The crushing riffs, exceptional drum, drum, drum performance, and superb songwriting make this album stand out. Tracks like Lady of Winter with an infectious chorus, Mask of the Red Depth featuring great solo, Burning Bridges, and many other great songs contribute to the album's overall brilliance. In my opinion, this album belongs in the high masterpiece tier, right up the top here, actually. Right next to Millet, Min Manila Road, right there. Whoa, it's a surprise to see Axel Rudy Power and that album between uh, the wars included, to be honest. Um, the album features very melodic uh, guitar work and great vocals. It offers a blend of heavy metal, speed metal, and power metal elements, showcasing good songwriting. While it's a solid album, I believe there are better ones out there, so I'll place this in the good tier. Standout tracks like Talk of the Guns and the 10 minute opus Casbah add to the album's appeal. Overall, it deserves a spot in the good tier, right? Uh, you know what? Yeah, uh, around there. Actually, Pagan Altar's crap, so I'll just put in. Actually, I'm putting Pagan Alt in nothing special. Really, nothing special. Our Savatage and the album Hall of the Mountain King will definitely go into the classic tier. It's amazing prog heavy metal. Legions is an amazing song along with The Price You Pay and the Hall of the Mountain King. The vocals are great and the songwriting is amazing. It's going in the fucking classic tier. Easily in the classic tier. So I'll just... 
Mm, I just put it here. I'm moving up Diamond Head a little bit, actually. Yeah. Diamond Head, so good. So we got um, Yang V. Manstein and his album Rising Force. To be like, brutally honest, it's okay. But let's focus on vocals and just 35 minutes of instrumentals. I personally prefer albums vocals as they complete the song for me. What a guitar work is undeniably impressive. It doesn't quite match the brilliance of his next album, Marching Out, which is more vocal oriented. Trilogy, another album by Munstein, is also on this list and leans more towards vocals. Therefore, I could categorize Rising for Force in the uh, low good tier there. Oh, we got Iron Man Summer in Time. It's going straight in the classic tier. <coughs> Easily. My god, right up the top. You know what? It goes right next to Dio. I fucking love Summer in Time. It's an incredible album from start to finish, and I had the privilege to see most of this album played live. With amazing songs like Caught Summer in Time, Heaven Can Wait, Wasted Years, and Alexander the Great. It's my favorite Iron Maiden album, so it's definitely going in the classic tier. So now we got Slayer's Show No Mercy. I'm thinking we'll go in Amazing Tier. It's a very good debut album, you could say. Put it right there. Um, Die By The Sword is an incredible song, along with Evil Has No Boundaries and Black Magic. This album is filled with manic vocals and insane guitar solos. I love it, so it's going in the Amazing Tier. So now we got Tank and the debut album, Filth, Hounds of Hades. It's a pretty good album, blending heavy metal and punk. The album sound, sound is the album sound is reminiscent of Motorhead, which begs the question is why Motorhead is included in this tier list. The album features really fun songs and brings to mind Iron Maiden's debut album. It's a fast and furious album starting with the weird intro in Shell Shock before diving into Heavy Metal Fury. Tracks like Struck by Lightning offer a punk and, punky and hard-hitting vibe. Overall, it's a good album, although not necessarily my preferred style with the punk crossover. I could place it in low good tier for me. Around here. Yeah, around, no, around there. So now we got Anthrax and the album Among the Living. As you know, I'm not a big fan of Anthrax, but this is a really good thrash metal record. I don't mind the vocals on this album. There are some great solos and thrashy riffs throughout. Standout tracks like Among the Living, Caught in the Mosh, and Cry for the Indians, which is probably my favorite Anthrax song, make the album a great listen. I would categorize this as in the great tier for me. Around there. Yeah. And now it's time to... To the final album, it's been real fun traveling back in time listening to these wonderful albums again. Black Sabbath and the debut album Black Sabbath. Their debut album, it, it it's only fitting to having this last. It's the first metal album, the eerie crushing doomy riffs and Black Sabbath and Ozzy's haunting vocals, The Wizard, NIB, and the slow pace behind The War of Sleep. There's so many great songs on this. It's a classic, no doubt, and it's going in the classic tier. Just a phenomenal piece of art that kickstarted metal. Without Black Sabbath, we wouldn't have metal as we know it today. This album should be admired by any metal fan, whether young or old. A masterpiece that's going into the classic tier right up the top. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this list, to be honest. I'm looking at it, and I'm quite happy. I might bump some, I might bump I Made and Above Dio. Um, I'm pretty happy with this list. Let me know in the comments below what you would rank. We just ranked a hundred fucking albums. Can you believe it? It's been fun, and I'll see you in the next one.